Hello and welcome to another Mobilitics video. I'm your host, Rakayu, and in this one, we have another five quick tips for you to climb ranked. And for this video, it will be about the green machine, Zach. Now I am a jungle guide maker here on YouTube and people always ask what are the best junglers to carry and everyone is always surprised when I mention Zach. He is an absolute blobby beast in the jungle and hopefully from this video you can learn a few ways to be even more effective on him and of course how to start every game by blowing yourself up like a balloon. The number one tip will be ganking a Zach. No one is surprised. The first and most important thing about Zack, at least when you think about playing or facing a Zack, is his ability to make a trip to the moon look like short distance. His E max range really makes him a tank version of Rexa, where you can just hit any single bit of terrain and get over it. The E range is huge, especially after you put a few points in, it escalates very very quickly, and he has the upper hand when it comes to the element of surprise. This is obviously the most important thing about ganking, is maintaining an element of surprise, preventing a counter gank coming through, and you do that by just circumventing vision by ganking from weird nooks and crannies. Of course the basics are you will always want to carry an oracle's lens and keep up with the control wards and vision wards, check in areas where they may be warding frequently, especially if you're being invaded by a nidley, but usually neutral laners will not respect the fact that you don't gank like every other jungler. On your screen now you should see some various angles you can gank from on the map in the top on the bottom lane, you can see various angles behind walls, from lane brushes. One of the most underused ganks by all junglers is the lane gank and Zack just hits different with this because if you can scan and approach and sit in that bush for a few seconds, they will not expect you to approach from such close range, but also long range. Here on your screen now are a few ways to gank mid effectively, even going behind enemy lines and diving turrets or ganking from the raptor pit on either side. Juicy. And you can actually make yourself look like a different flavor of juice with the chromas. But I don't think Mobilitics wants me to say that, so once you've done this into a lane, once you've dove a lane, try to land just behind them so that they get knocked back into the lane slightly. You can combo this with your Q or ultimate to then knock them back even further into your teammates. This is especially important because it gets them away from safety and it helps deliver targets to a node laners that still haven't realized you're ganking. And of course there's always an alternative way of ganking, so instead of leading with an E, if you know an area isn't warded, then you can simply walk into the lane, lead with your Q, slap the champion together with a minion or any other target, and then save your E if they flash or dash away. This is definitely a more consistent way of ganking, especially in the early game, and versus champions that have high mobility, so that's every champion released since 2020. Tip number two, taking the green blob, diving. So, due to Zack's passive where he explodes into mini blobbies, he is actually one of the best and most aggressive diving champions throughout all stages of the game. Early game, you abuse this and absolutely take certain lanes out of the game by repeatedly diving your enemies. Remember, repeat and abuse all lanes that you have chosen to feel the wrath of your blobbiness. Not only is your passive perfect at diving, but the amount of CC and self-healing you have also makes it kind of unnatural and a little bit uncomfortable to use. You can dive in with your E, kill your opponent, and then hit the turret for an easy knockout, or hit another champion or minion if possible. You then use your ultimate for further cryo control, and it actually extends your blob collecting range too, so when that's running out, it's a great time to abuse it for some more healing. Just in case that wasn't enough, you have your passive to save you, in case your laners are completely shocked that a jungler decided to dive a crashing wave. Or maybe you didn't dive the crashing wave and there's no wave, and that's why you need your passive. Don't think this is only an early game trick, in the mid to late game you can abuse it as well. Make sure you're consistently focusing on vision control and creating spaces in the fog of war from which you can use your E. Usually, if you slingshot from somewhere that isn't warded, it won't leave your opposition much time to react, especially under their own turret. And if they're a dashless target like, you know, a poor helpless Jinx and they have no flash, then they're doomed. If you're playing Zack and you're not abusing this dive potential throughout every phase of the game, you're playing him wrong. Remember that outside of solo queue, if you're playing with the Flex 5 squad or you're playing Clash, maybe some normals, if things go badly and you turn into a bunch of blobbies with a high squeaky voice, tell your teammates to please TP to one of them and you will survive the unfortunate circumstances and then you can E out of danger while flexing a B emote. Tip number three. Q-tips, and yes, there was no joke whatsoever about cleaning your ears, although I don't recommend you necessarily use that on yourself or on Zack, makes things get a little squishy and compacted, but outside of Zack's E, his passive is ultimate, the Q is actually an amazing tool. I mained a lot of Zack back in the day, and the first time I ever got Diamond, I used Zack Jungle. Obviously, this was so long ago that most of you weren't born, but he's been changed and reworked and reverted, but the Q, the new Q that they put in, actually stuck around because it's so good. The ability to bring opponents back towards you, this anti-mobility spell he has, is significantly underappreciated, and learning how to use this ability properly is key to playing him well and guaranteeing your slimy chain CC. 
So typically when using this ability, if facing one champion, you want to hit a minion with your Q and then order the enemy champion. Otherwise, if you miss your Q on the target, you've wasted the ability altogether. So get good. If you're ganking bottom lane and facing more than one champion, which you should be doing because it's a free double kill and it tilts fi, try hit your Q on one champion and then simply auto attack the other one. It brings them together just like they're meant to be. And if there's no minions, champions are targeted to hit with the second Q, wait a second and then auto attack the same target to reapply the slow. And that last bit is very important. And if you hadn't gathered already, Zach's Q counts as an auto attack. This means you'll be able to hit almost anything that you can usually hit with an auto attack and still apply the CC. This includes towers, which is super useful when diving, although the tower doesn't move just the champion. I hope you didn't think otherwise. It also includes jungle plants, so Scryer's Bloom, Honey Fruit, and Blast Cones all work for you to activate this CC, as well as the Scuttle Crab, which is handy when dueling in the river, but as if laners ever rotate anyway. It also includes certain opposition abilities like Heimerdinger turrets. So yes, use it against him. You can also use Zach's Q when clearing the jungle to keep yourself healthier and clear faster, which is something I'm always talking about in coaching out on my channel. Please, faster and more efficient clears can make so many good things happen for you in the early game. Specifically for Zach, this can be used when taking camps together. Specifically, like using it on the Krogs and then auto attacking the red buff, which CCs the buff and removes one of its attacks. Nice. For tip number four, we've spoken about his ganking strengths and using that E, but now we're going to talk more about the ability in detail with a few little tips and tricks that can increase your efficiency. The first tip is that you can use your E on the spot to hit targets directly on top of you. It's not only a long range missile, it's also a grenade. This is very useful when dueling enemy junglers early in the game. Hitting the ability gives you a blob to heal off of alongside its damage and knockup. Zax E gives him one of the best ways to steal dragon or baron in the game as well. Kane thinks he's cool while using his ultimate while Zack can fly from one side of the pit to the other side, not land in the pit, and smite it while flying. It's risk-free, it's hilarious, and it completely demoralizes the enemy team. If you would like a bit more comedy, if you want to be a big shiny blob of golden goodness, you can use a stopwatch or Zonya's hourglass while in your E, and this is uniquely effective when versus champions who can interrupt your engage, as the Zonyas will prevent them from breaking your E, and the knockout will still happen when you land regardless. Throwing a little bit of AP with his ratios is always a good idea as well, especially if you need a bit more damage in an AD heavy comp. If you cast either your Q or ultimate while you are flying in your E animation, you will instantly use that ability as soon as you land. This is a great way to animation cancel your abilities for extra burst and damage. Remember, no matter what champion you're playing, reducing and removing an enemy's ability to react to you is always the best way to guarantee success to hit your spell. The final tip is really a unique way to actually use your ultimate while you are flying in your E. It's pretty difficult to pull off, and to be honest, there may not be a crazy amount of situations to use this, but you know, if you have a tool for the job, when the job arises, you're prepared. And if you want to master this champion, it's always good to know that there may be that perfect opportunity eventually. The way to do this is if you Q a target and then you use your E. As soon as that tether of your Q breaks whilst flying in your E, you can use your ultimate. The fifth and final tip for today's video is talking about matchups, which is always very important when you want to navigate the jungle. No, we don't always have to lane against them, but it can always impact our pathing and how we go about the early game. The three matchups we're going to highlight are Jarvan, Elise, and Nocturne. Zack is someone who can farm pretty well for a tank, but is most commonly known for his relentless ganking as well as teamfighting. When you verse heavy farming junglers who are looking to gain elite and experience and gold through power farming, as well as securing objectives, you will want to look toward deep into their jungle and track their whereabouts. Remember, ganking carries an inherent risk, so if you do not have success or you get counter ganked too many times, an enemy jungler like a Nocturne will have great success against you. Also, don't forget to, you know, spend too much time on one side of the map because they will, and I mean will, counter jungle you and that experience lead will grow and grow. And then you lose 2v2s, you lose objectives, it's not a good time. But when you are facing heavy ganking junglers, you will also want to focus on utilizing your strengths in counter ganking. We did mention that they would do this to you, but Zack is one of the best in the game at this particular facet. Deep wards, knowing that the enemy jungler who is a farming jungler or a ganking jungler will look to gank around certain power spikes, Nocturne likes to gank around 6, Jarvan and Elise like to gank around 3, get your wards down, scan your approaches, and be ready to slingshot and turn ganks into your favor with your obnoxious CC. So Jarvan is arguably one of Zack's toughest opponents in the jungle due to him being able to duel you throughout. That percentage HP damage buff that he received recently, that also doesn't help because, you know, we like to build HP. He can also cancel our engage and escape with his flag and drag combo. If Jarvan is ready and waiting for you with a counter gank, you're gonna have a really bad time being locked in his crater of death. Focus on making sure you're aware of where he is before committing too hard, track where he starts in the game, 
But despite this, you can still play to your strengths and look to counter gank him in kind. And that's literally always a thing with Zack. Counter ganking and using your E to disrupt any sort of fight, always look for this. All of this holds true in teamfights. He can still interrupt the engage, disrupt what you want to do, lock you inside his ultimate, and then you're just bouncing in a big ball of depression. Try to get set up in areas where they don't have vision and use this and time it according to Jarvan's spells as well. Much like Jarvan, Nocturne is probably still going to be able to duel you in the early game, although he can do that to anyone to be fair. At least in this matchup, you can have an easier time getting away. You can either use your E, Q or even ult to avoid his via tether and get out of reach of him pretty easily, but do be careful of his spell shield when looking to fight him and CC him. If you mistime your spells with his spell shield, then he can basically negate you pretty fast. When it comes to ganking, Nocturne shares similar traits to Zack and that he can gank from pretty unpredictable places due to his ultimate, and because of this, you will want to deep ward inside the enemy jungle and try to be ready and waiting to counter gank when the darkness comes. And if you were to believe Mordor, it always does. Our final matchup is Elise, and if she catches you in the jungle with her cocoon, her bite is gonna be pretty hard and you're just squishy ice cream. Try to keep your jungle entrances watered to avoid her catching you whilst you're farming. On the off chance you do fight her, make sure to utilize your Q to hit her spiderlings for a free bit of damage and CC. Aside from this, when it comes to ganking, at least doesn't really stand a chance against Zack. This only gets worse if it's a heavy AP comp when you get that Spirit Visage. He outdoes her massively with his crowd control, and although Elise may pack more punch, Zack can completely deny her from delivering it. Try to follow Elise's movements and shut down her early pathing and any gank she attempts. Elise may look to use her repel when you engage, but after this, she has no real escape. If she wastes it, make sure to abuse her for it. Much like Zack, Elise is a champion who thrives in turret diving scenarios, in fact she is the queen of this, and as such, because you're slower at farming and not going to be able to match her tempo, it can be very easy to expect her dives, place a ward, position yourself properly, and punish her for this with a well-timed elastic slingshot. Well there you have it, that concludes our 5 quick tips video to climb ranked all about Zack. I hope you enjoyed and learned something, we hope it helps you, climb with the tank, enjoy your blobs, let us know in the comments what champions you might want to see next. Thank you very much for watching, and as always, we will see you all in the next tutorial.